how to earn 250k per year or more as a freelancing consultant or as a solo consultant. Hi, my name is Johannes and on this channel I want to help you to have a successful career in consulting and to earn 250k or more per year. And if you are a consulting freelancer or if you are a solo consultant, then maybe you know the situation that you want to earn 250k per year or even more from your activities. And I can talk a little bit based on my own experience because I was or actually I currently am in the same situation. So to give you a little bit of my background, so I first started working as a management consultant in a strategy consulting firm actually for a couple of years. I became project manager there. I worked there for around five to six years. And then I took, uh, decided to go out and to actually become a freelancing consultant. And I was able like in the past six months to make revenue between 30 and 50K per month. So I was able to even earn much more than 250K per year. And in this video, I wanna share some tips that help me to get to that level. And hopefully this helps you as well to earn at least 250K per year to really, you know, have enough resources to live the life that you actually wanna live. So let's start directly into it and let's start with tip number one. And tip number one is that you actually learn the skills and the tools that you need in order to deliver outstanding work. And this is really, really important to understand because the key to earn a lot of money, and here it doesn't matter, you know, if this is like in a job as an employee or as a uh, entrepreneur or, you know, solo consultant, it doesn't matter. But the most important thing to make a lot of money is that you have the skills that you need to deliver outstanding work because the market will pay you for the actual value that you bring. And the more skills you bring to the table, of course, the more money you will make. Okay, and this is really important. Now the big question is what kind of skills, uh, skills am I talking about? And in most cases, I'm still talking about very basic skills. It's not about, you know, and this is, you know, something that comes later on and we will talk about that as well in this video, but it's not in, at that stage, it's not about, you know, becoming the top expert, you know, in your field. This will come later on, but at this moment, it is about, you know, having the right skills to actually deliver great work. If you work on a project, you know, to provide great deliverables, you know, that really have a high quality to communicate in a way, you know, that people really understand very quickly what you want to tell them to organize yourself, you know, that you are able to manage multiple work streams, for example. I'm talking about these basic skills because these skills are, you know, responsible for like, you know, probably 80% of the outcome, you know, talking in a Pareto principle, like 20% of skills are responsible for 80% of your outcome. And here I'm not talking about the expertise. I'm really talking about this, these basic skills, you know, that you need to create great deliverables. And what kind of skills am I talking about? I like to, you know, summarize always in, in like four skills categories. The first skill category, these are the technical skills. And in most cases, you know, for us as management consultants, this means that we have to work with PowerPoint and Excel. And here it's really important, you know, to learn how to work with these tools, to build good slides, to, you know, make good looking slides where you can transport uh, information very quickly, very efficiently. You know, also if you want to build presentations to create a kind of uh, story here, that's really important that you learn how to do that. Also, if you want to do some analysis with Excel, it's important that you learn how to prepare data, how to analyze data, how to visualize data, and also again, you know, to work efficiently with Excel to save a lot of time and to, you know, provide the most value for the client in the least um, uh, possible time. And these are the technical skills, and this is really the foundation that you need to master also as a solo consultant and freelance consultant, because this is the foundation of probably every deliverable that you will produce. The next uh, uh, skill set level, this is what I call the hard skills. And this means that you become really good in problem solving and in strategic frameworks and strategic analysis and also, for example, financial modeling. I mean, this is a bit tailored now to strategy consulting work. If you are maybe an HR consultant, uh, then you don't need to become an expert in financial modeling, of course, but you still need to become a master, you know, in problem solving in general and in the respective frameworks that you need 
for your current niche that you are operating in. Okay, and these are the hard skills, and this is the second step. You know, once you are able to provide good deliverables, that you then have you know the tools that you need to also create good solutions. Then the third skill set that I like to talk about this is the soft skill uh, set. And this means that you're able to communicate in the right way, that you're able to hold presentations, that you're also good at organizing yourself and the project team if you are uh, operating in a team with a client, for example. And there's another skill set, you know, very basic skills, but you need to master them in order to provide good work. And then the fourth skill set, you know, this is the mindset that you need to develop and need to develop because also as a solo consultant, also as a freelancing consultant, as an entrepreneur, there are challenging moments on a project that you will face. You know, let's be honest about it. This will happen and this happens all the time and then you need to prepare for that. And the way I did that, you know, I really focused during my time, you know, uh, when I worked as a for a strategy, uh, strategy consulting firm, I really used the time to systematically acquire these skills, okay? And this is, you know, was my school, okay? There I really learned, you know, to, you know, become really, really good in PowerPoint and Excel, all the frameworks, all the tools, uh, all the soft skills as well. I learned, you know, how to develop the mindset. So if you are working for a, uh, a large consulting firm as well, you know, this is a good opportunity to learn these skills. If you don't have that background, then you need to find other resources, okay, to learn these skills, to really bring these skills to the next level, okay? The next step, and this is tip number two that I can give you, is that once you master these skills, that you position yourself in the market, okay? And this is also really important that you find your niche where you're operating in, okay? Because you want to be known for something in the market and you want to find a niche that typically com uh, combines three aspects, okay? So first of all, you need to have a certain passion for that topic, okay? You need to find a niche where you have some kind of interest. It doesn't make sense if you just, you know, work on a topic that, you know, is currently a trend topic, but you don't really have passion for that because, you know, if you want to consult in a certain topic, this means that you have to spend a lot of time, you know, working on this topic. And basically, you need to have some passion, you need to have some interest in order to become good in what you actually want to do. On the other hand, you don't, I, I mean, you know, sometimes people spend too much time on actually finding, you know, the one topic that they are passionate about. I don't think that there is one topic that, you know, uh, people are passionate, uh, passionate about. I think, you know, there, there should be some, you know, genuine interest about the topic, but, uh, you know, there are probably like, for me personally, three to five topics where I could be potentially uh, interested in. And I think it's just important to pick one of them, okay? So there is not the one topic and don't spend years or months finding your one topic, but sit down and think about, hey, what are things, what are aspects, what are problems that you're interested about that you want to solve and then, you know, try to specialize there. So the one criteria for your niche is that you are passionate about it. The second is that you have a certain expertise. This means that you maybe have worked on these projects in the past or maybe you did some kind of qualification for that. Maybe you read a lot about this topic. So it doesn't matter, but you also need to have some expertise because if you want to sell your services, it's really difficult to start from zero. So think about, okay, what kind of experiences did you make in the past and where do you have some potential expertise that you also can leverage? So first, we need to have a, a topic where you're passionate about. Second, we need a topic where you have certain expertise. And third, I would choose a topic where there's a positive, a positive future outlook, okay? And there are some trend topics like digitization or sustainability at the moment where we know, okay, this is huge, but there are also some, you know, evergreen topics like um, a transformation, for example, or restructuring or HR or process optimization, okay? But on the other hand, there are also some industries or some niches, you know, where maybe there's a declining trend where we know, okay, in the future, probably there won't be a lot of demand for that. And it's important that your niche, you know, combines all these three aspects, okay? So you need to be passionate about it. You need to have some kind of expertise and uh, the niche also needs a positive outlook for the future, okay? And this is tip number two, that you find a positioning for yourself. And then tip number three that I can give you is that you then start, you know, once you build the skills, once you find your positioning, that you then actually focus on acquiring clients. 
And there are many different ways and I could talk, you know, probably about hours, you know, about this, uh, this topic, but there are many different ways on acquiring clients. Just to name a few, okay? I think in consulting, like the most important thing is that you get referrals, okay? And that you also leverage your existing network and previous clients that you work with. Because here, you typically, you know, if you've done everything right, if you have the right skills to deliver outstanding work, they already are convinced of you and then you can maybe do some follow-up projects here or, you know, uh, acquire some new projects. So this is really important that you work with referrals and leverage your existing client base. You could also work as a subcontractor for a larger consulting firm, okay, um, or for a consulting team, or you know, join other freelancers to uh, to have a community of freelancing consultants to do projects together. This could also be a, a way to acquire new clients, or you could start, you know, doing social media marketing. You know that you start posting about a certain topic, that you launch a podcast, for example, a YouTube channel, that you post a lot of in, uh, on LinkedIn, for example, to try to get in contact with people. You also could extend your network, that you go to networking events, that you try you know, to build connections, to get in touch with uh, certain decision makers, or you can do some very direct acquisition um, measures like contacting them directly through LinkedIn or you know, sending them uh, marketing material. So there are many different ways and many different strategies that we could talk about, but it's important that you pick two or three strategies and that you really focus on the sales process, that you really focus on acquiring these customers. And it's also something that you have to learn, okay? And these are three tips. So first of all, learn the skills that you need to learn to, um, to uh, you know, um, provide outstanding uh, performance. Second, find your niche in the market. And third, also make sure that you acquire clients. And as I said, you know, I did all of these three tips. So first of all, I learned all the skills. I did that in my previous job, but also I invested a lot of money, you know, to learn about PowerPoint, Excel, communication, presentations, and so on. So really make sure that my work is on the highest possible level. Then second, you know, I also focused on developing my niche. So, uh, you know, I really thought about, okay, what am I passionate about? What did I do in the past? So I personally, you know, I'm focused on transformation and strategy projects. This is what I do. And also, you know, I put a lot of work in, you know, acquiring projects and new clients. So with my social media activities, with, you know, leveraging my existing network. And, you know, these three steps really helped me to get to that level where I earn even more than 250K per year with my freelancing activities. I hope this helped you. And if you want to have support with that, if you want to learn the skills, if you want to find your positioning, if you want to learn how to acquire new clients, and if you want to have support with that, then please get in touch with me. You can apply for a free coaching session by following the link below. And with that being said, I hope you have a successful week and talk to you soon. Goodbye, Johannes.